After carrying a handgun for more than a decade, I've learned a few things about concealed carry. I carried both in my previous home state of Massachusetts and even in downtown Boston, and now that I live in South Carolina, I still concealed carry. And those are two very different scenarios because of, well, both the laws in those locations and the climate, but there are a few commonalities between them that universally apply. But when it comes to summer carry, there are some unique things you have to know in particular to actually be effective and make sure that you're ready for anything that comes your way. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this and it's gonna piss some people off. The only way to conceal carry if you live in the Southeast, at least in the summer, is pocket carry. I'm sure someone out there is gonna tell me they can carry a Desert Eagle in the small of their back and they feel cool as a cucumber all day long, but I don't. If it's 100 degrees out, I sweat like a pig. I don't know anybody who doesn't, right? So for me, it's always been pocket carry because I can get to this very easily and have it up and on target very, very quickly. There are some other options as well. So in my experience, let me tell you the one universal rule for summer carry and pocket carry, right? It's really easy and as soon as you hear it, you're gonna go, well, that makes sense. And it does, because it's, it's, it's stupid. The most, the most guiding principles that we learn in anything, the most fundamental aspects are just that, fundamental. They're not complex. So what is it? It's simple. Train realistically. That's why I'm out here in my, what I would wear normally out. I've got a collared shirt on, shorts, a ball cap. The only thing that's really different, I've got earplugs in. And uh, that's something I'm not willing to sacrifice for training is, is my permanent hearing, since that doesn't come back. My point being, there's a lot of other things you need to, need to incorporate, but basically make sure that you train realistically. And this means a few different things, right? So if you're at a range and you want to practice with your concealed handgun, right, your concealed carry pistol, don't just simply walk up to the range, load your gun, sit there, take deep breaths, bam, 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 bam. I don't have my earplug in or I would be shooting. Um, the reason being, this is not directly applicable practice. Is it useful? Certainly. Will it help you in a gunfight? Probably. Is it the best use of your time? Absolutely not. Now, I understand before I say this that not every range will allow this, but if your range does allow drawing from a holster or from concealment, this is tremendously effective. Now, if they don't, I have an alternate exercise, so to speak, but let's start off. I'll show you what I'm talking about, drawing from the, uh, the pocket. So I'm gonna toss in my earplugs so I can actually maintain what semblance of hearing I have left. And, I'm wearing my non-ballistically rated sunglasses because these are the sunglasses that I tend to wear when I'm driving or I'm out on a sunny day. All right, so you walk around the corner, some guy demands your money and you're like, all right, it's not worth dying for the 30, $40 in my wallet. And then he produces a handgun and two buddies who look like they want to take advantage of your children, wife, whatever, they're scumbags. So you've got to, you've got to engage them with equivalent or more lethal force. So you draw from your pocket holster and the thing is, get up on target quickly and engage, right? But notice, I didn't just snap the target fire. What you want to do, because you're very likely, unless you live in like the Sudan or you're in the middle of Afghanistan and you just fell out of a broken Apache helicopter, is you're going to be surrounded by civilians. So identify your target before you even commit to engage. But that should be rule number one, is the commitment in general. If you don't have the mindset to actually fight for your own life, don't bother with a handgun, you're already dead. Is it, is it morbid, is it dark? Certainly, but it, it's absolutely fundamental. If you don't care enough to fight for your own life, why are you even bothering carrying a gun in the first place? Once you've made that decision that you're going to fight against whatever odds there are, and you will persevere, that's almost as effective as being a trained gunfighter. It's, and it's absolutely fundamental to it. But back to that second part. Take in your situation, look around. People give me crap for that when I'm, I'm shooting a rifle and I stop and do the left right turn. It's force of habit, right? Situational awareness is crucial to driving and is crucial to fighting. You can't win a fight against the guy you never saw. So for this instance, I'm shooting at a shoot steel, steel target. I think it's half size and I'm at right about 22 feet, 21 feet. The distance that the average man can traverse in the time the average police officer can draw 
from a duty holster and engage them. Right? This is critical. Now, aside from that, if you're at a range and they say, no way, no how, you are not drawing from concealment, you're not drawing from a holster, I'm just not going to allow it. There's an alternate exercise for that, right? Start from a low ready. Ideally, with a pack timer of some sort so you can wait for the buzzer to go off and then when you hear the beep, flip the safety off and engage. Now, it's important, right? This is a single action only firearm. It's a SIG. It's a phenomenal little handgun chambered in nine millimeter. Has a decent amount of recoil, but it is controllable. Now the capacity on it's not perfect, but the thing I like about it is that it's single action only because I learned to shoot on a 1911. So for me, part of the draw stroke is as soon as that muzzle clears my body, safety's off, push forward. So for this gun, if you're drawing it from concealment, wait till it's up basically here if you're drawing high. At this point, click the safety off, push forward, bring it up to your eyes and engage. Don't sink your head down to the gun. Think about it like this. If you were in a boxing match, right? You need to maintain situational awareness. So you keep your head up and keep your fists up. Sure, if he's swinging for your head, then you duck, right? But when you're about to, about to blast somebody in the face with a, with a sharp right hook, you don't hide and, and, and act like you're trying to donkey punch him or something. No, you're trying to actually follow through. This stance keeps your weight squared, keeps your body squared, gives you natural resistance to the recoil of the firearm. But it almost, or at least partially, runs contradictory to this next part, right? Get off the X. A lot of what James Aker says may be controversial. Some people say he's out of his mind, but he is absolutely correct when he preaches to people to get off the X. What do I mean? Move. You have to move while shooting. Now, very few ranges will allow for this. So the, my solution for this is if you have any sort of, uh, of space at home to train in, and by the way, if you're gonna train at home with a firearm, right, obviously make sure it's empty, but dedicate a room to doing so. Don't watch TV while you do it. Don't play cards, don't answer emails, do nothing else, right? Make sure that room is always devoid of all ammunition. Once you've done so, one of the things you wanna do is practice moving left, moving right, still getting on target, maybe turning and shifting. The important part is if the guy's shooting back at you or if he's running at you, it's a lot easier for him to reach you if you just sit there and take it. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty damn good shot, right? Does not mean that I can down somebody who is on, you know, God knows how much PCP before you can run a rusty shift through my gut. Now, the last part of training realistically is understanding the capabilities of both yourself and the firearm you're intending to carry. So I've, you've been seeing my 938. I have another gun that I used to carry, and I'll show you the difference. This other little pistol I bought back in the People's Republic of Massachusetts when I lived there, and it is a Smith & Wesson 442 Hammerless 38. It's a J-frame. Now, snub nose revolvers have often been called the concealed carry choice of professionals. That's not to say that it's the best choice out there far from it, but it takes a professional to actually be able to control one, which is why I will never in my entire life advocate giving one of these to a small framed woman as her first concealed carry piece. A, the trigger pull is terrible on these guns, and B, they tend to be very blasty. So unless your loved one, wife, girlfriend, whatever, has the grip strength of a kung fu master, she's going to have a hell of a time getting rounds downrange in the correct direction and getting back on target. So, in terms of training realistically, if you're going to carry a revolver, unless you are very, very good, train at realistic distances. So 21 feet, that's fine. So you get a half size silhouette. No problem. If you're really experienced, you might be able to even go for the headshot. But it's very difficult. You've got a very, very short barrel here. And if you watch, if I try to speed up, I'll almost certainly miss. Yeah, it's very, very easy to pull those shots. So what's the takeaway from all of this? Train 
in conditions as close to possible as to what you'll actually encounter. Now, since I lack a kill house or the X-Men's danger room, I can't recreate a South, Carolin South Carolinian back alley where I'll get jumped by three muggers, right? Just can't do it. I and I can't also sit inside my car and have somebody carjack me who's also a steel target or, or a uh, impact dummy. But I can train without gloves, with the glasses I normally wear, from the holster I carry, with the gun I carry, using the ammunition I carry inside of that gun to minimize as many variables as possible. So if the unthinkable were to ever occur, I'll be as ready as I possibly can be. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more burst reviews.